just like back in the 50s. 40, 60. Why do we have to keep saying we're human? Black lives don't really matter in the state of Minnesota because this is not the first time that we have seen an innocent African-American person or other person of color killed at the hands of the police department. Uh, they, like, they like to say we thought our life was at risk and we felt threatened, which they, they could pretty much say that and get away with it. Uh, you look at these videos, nobody's life was a threat. That was clear. Police brutality is unfortunately a huge problem in our society nowadays. Hundreds of unarmed and innocent African Americans have been victims of cases of police brutality that can only end one of two ways, serious injury or worst case scenario, death. My name is Tyler Glavin and today I'm going to be discussing how this term police brutality is nothing new. Police have been racially targeting and harming innocent African American citizens for years now with no repercussions. In today's video, we are going to be looking at a variety of different sources from ex-cops to PhDs in sociology and psychology who all express the same message. Racism is embedded within our criminal justice system and it permeates the actions of all of our country's officers. So pretty much everyone is familiar with the term police brutality. This has been a huge issue over the past few years, so it unfortunately always seems to be fresh in all of our minds. It seems as if every couple of weeks we hear about another case of an unarmed or innocent African American that was either seriously injured or even killed by police officers. These violent and racist acts against the African American community have sparked many great protests such as Black Lives Matter in hopes to achieve equality and put an end to these terrible acts. Although these movements and conversations have been very prevalent in the media over the past few years, police brutality is nothing new. In fact, it has been around forever. An article published on Smithsonian.com shows us an image of a poster that states, we demand an end to police brutality now. The poster seen here is actually over 50 years old and was used in the civil rights movement. This poster is actually in the Smithsonian and looks exactly like something that would be seen at a Black Lives Matter movement today. The fact that this poster is over 50 years old goes to show how very little this problem has been addressed. In an article published by the Washington Post, the author states, 233 African Americans were shot and killed by police in 2016, a startling number when demographics are considered. African Americans make up 13% of the US population, but account for 24% of people fatally shot by police. They then continue to state that blacks are two and a half times as likely as white Americans to be shot and killed by police officers. And unfortunately, that's not all. These statistics go on and on. An article published on TheGuardian.com states, young black men were nine times more likely than other Americans to be killed by police officers, despite making up only 2% of the total US population. Their rate of police involved deaths were five times higher than for white men of the same age. Now I know that that was a decent amount of information and statistics, so I'm not going to overload you with stats, but imagine being an African American and hearing or seeing these statistics on the news constantly. How would you feel? Nervous or scared? This is exactly what the psychologists and sociologists who published the article, Police Brutality and Black Health in the American Journal of Public Health were wondering. A group of doctors from different programs and universities across the country were all wondering the same thing. What clinical effects does police brutality have on African American citizens, both mentally and physically? They got together and performed some tests, and here's what they found. The article states, We argue that police brutality is a social determinant of health, although it hasn't received sufficient attention from the public health community. White supremacy and the devaluation of African Americans permeates the U.S. law enforcement system. The article goes on to discuss how police brutality not only affects citizens on a physical level through the actual brutality aspect, but also affects their mental health due to the fear factor that African Americans unfortunately constantly have to experience, either when in direct encounter with a police officer or just in their everyday lives. We are now going to look at a few different video clips of former police officers giving us some insight as to what life is actually like inside the criminal justice system. Here we will see how these racist elements are embedded within the system. In this video, we see a former police officer who actually quit his career due to the racist elements that are embedded within the system. These racist elements affect the way all officers act. These actions cause national issues, especially in communities of color. 
Historically, minority officers have been unable to obtain positions of power within the system to change these racist actions and ways of thought. This former officer claims that many officers have been released when trying to fight these issues. Institutional racism is at the foundation of the American criminal justice system and it permeates police culture. There's not a major urban police department that's not dealing with issues of institutional racism. I decided to leave the police department because I was profoundly disillusioned with the United States criminal justice system and the racism at its, at its foundation and the impact that that has nationally on communities of color everywhere, black and brown communities. Historically, uh, black officers, Latino officers, minority officers have not held enough positions of power and authority in terms of rank, in terms of administration, to protect themselves when they challenge the culture, when they challenge the system. And the retribution is usually swift and it's very real. Mainstream America is only now becoming more aware because now the prevalence of uh, cell phone cameras, video cameras, and other recording devices has finally allowed them to see what people have been telling them for generations now. First order of business when it comes to changing this system is accountability. Accountability, you need to be punished. When you violate the civil rights and civil liberties and the right to life of the citizens you're in service to in violation of the Constitution and your own policy, punishment is the first order of the day. He also states that as soon as officers graduate from the police academy, elder police officers tell them to forget everything they just learned and everything they were taught, all the political correctness. These elder police officers then proceed to teach the members of the true police culture. This may very well be where these constant racist views come from. Mainstream America is only now becoming aware of the constant police brutality against African Americans due to the use of smartphones. Citizens are now capturing these brutal and disturbing videos on their phones when the police are committing terrible acts of violence and abuse against innocent citizens. In this video, a former Baltimore police officer gives the viewer some insight as to what life is like after he ratted out a group of police officers after he witnessed them abuse a handcuffed suspect. This particular officer was the head of his training group at the police academy and became a detective after only one year of police work. Although he was quickly moving up through the ranks of the force, his dream job was brutally taken away from him because he informed his bosses of what he had witnessed. All I ever wanted to do, I just wanted to help people. I moved up the ranks extremely quick. When I was in the academy, I was in charge of my class. I was my class commander. Upon graduating, I received uh, the commissioner's award for uh, the trainee that exhibits the most leadership. I was the first in my class to make detective. It took me a year after I got out to make detective, and uh, that was probably one of the most proud moments uh, of my life. While I was there, uh, I was working as a, a drug detective. I saw a guy selling drugs on the street. We went to stop him. The guy threw the drugs and ran. Uh, he was ultimately chased and uh, kicked in the back door of a, a woman's home and they brought him into a back room where he was assaulted. Ultimately, I found out later on that he had his ankle broken and uh, you know, he'd, uh, he had also said that he was assaulted and beat. At that time, all I could think about was you know, that as cops, we, uh, we needed to you know, A, police ourselves. You know, I didn't want to be a part of that. I didn't become a cop to be, get justice, I be, or street justice, I'm sorry, I became a cop to get real justice. I tried to report it that night and was told that if I uh, snitched about what happened, that it would be the end of my career. After that, it was like a roller coaster that uh, I just couldn't get off of. I had to deal with, you know, being called a snitch and a rap by sergeants and other officers. I had uh, multiple times I called for backup and uh, nobody came to back me up, you know, in dangerous situations cha uh, chasing uh, a felony drug suspect. Nobody from my squad would ride, told me they didn't want to ride with me because I talked about what had happened. I had a, uh, a sergeant call me and threaten me at my house and tell me I better pray to God I'm not the star witness. Somebody placed a dead rat on mine on my wife's car. Um, it just, it, it kept going for, even from there. So uh, I ended up making a decision to leave the police department ultimately and give up my dream, my childhood dream of being a cop. Ninety-eight, ninety-nine percent of cops are great. They work all hours of the night. They, you know, make sure that they protect you and your families. You know, they do the right thing. I'm hoping that, you know, 
the lawsuit that I filed that it will help other cops, you know, feel the strength to come forward and, you know, talk about what happened. Talk about, you know, if they saw something that they don't have to be afraid, that we're here to help you, you know, and that they could actually actively police the police themselves. You know, we're not above the law. And I'm just hoping that that's what I'd ultimately like to see happen with this whole thing is that, you know, it's going to instill that integrity that citizens could look and, you know, read your guy's article or, you know, look at me and say, look, not all cops are bad. And you know what? He's right. Most cops do do good things. After this officer informed his boss of the brutal beating he had witnessed, he was then tortured with threats, harassment, and insults, all by other police officers and sergeants, because he brought to light a serious case of police brutality. He even had someone put a rat on his and his wife's family car. After the nonstop torturous life he endured, he was forced to quit his job and move across the country to get away from the threats and insults. Unfortunately for this problem to see change, it's going to take brave police officers like these two leaving the force and telling their stories in order to make others aware of what is going on inside the system. Maybe then we as a society will begin to see change and cops being held accountable for their actions. These videos really give an average citizen what life is like inside the police force and how corrupt it really is. It helps us understand how actions like police brutality are allowed to happen without punishment. This topic of police brutality is something that I've always been very passionate about. I was raised in a household where I was taught to love everyone exactly the same, no matter what they looked like or what the color of their skin was, so this topic really bothers me on a personal level. This institutional racism that exists within the police force needs to be put to rest and maybe then we will see an end to police brutality. Police officers need to be held accountable for their actions and punishment, and jail time needs to be given to those who violate the laws. All jobs require accountability no matter how big or small that job happens to be, and there should be no excuses for police officers. If you violate the rules, you need to be punished and released from the force. Many officers deserve to go to jail, but often don't. Accountability needs to be emphasized within this career, and those who don't follow the rules need to be punished. In no way am I saying that this occurs with all police officers, nor am I saying that all police officers are racist but it just so happens to be a large recurring theme within this system. We are constantly seeing cases of police brutality and something needs to be done to change how this system functions. This issue of police brutality is a huge problem in our society that needs to see change. After seeing all these different sources and citizens who are all fighting the same thing, maybe soon enough we'll see change, but citizens and police officers need to continue to speak up and let their voice be heard. That's what's so great about America, that people can voice their opinions and hopefully they will be heard and change will finally prevail. I hope that after viewing this video, police officers will understand the message that is being sent and inspire them to do better within their own careers. And for the rest of us, we need to continue to fight this issue and inspire others to help put an end to the terrible acts of police brutality. My name is Tyler Glavin. I hope you liked the video and thanks for watching.